Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back once again to Breath of Fire 4. When we last left off, well, I don't really remember. I think we just got through the cliffs. Now, at this point, there's a couple things we can do. There is, uh, I think. Is it there? Anyway, there's a side path that you can find here that leads to a fishing spot, and this is it right here. Uh, the fishing spot. <laughs> At this point in the game, I really don't recommend you go fishing, uh, due to the fact that there's really no good fishing rewards for, in fact, a very, 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 very long time. Uh, well, of course, unless you do an absurd amount of fishing. Uh, I'll go over the way the Manila stores work when we get to one, which there's one here in the next town, uh, but uh, don't expect me to be doing a whole lot of fishing. Alright, if you go through this way, it leads you to a fishing spot. Unfortunately, this game, they kind of toned down the Manilos. Um, in Breath of Fire 3, you could get spectacular rewards from fishing. Uh, you could still get spectacular rewards from fishing, but they're all stilted at the very end of the game, and... and require, frankly, way too much fishing. Not really. Now at this point right here, depending on what you say, Nina will either leave you by yourself or stay with you. Uh, I like to leave her in the party, so if you say either of these, she leaves you alone. If you say I don't know, she stays in your party. Uh, it really doesn't change anything. It does, to me, make the story a little more coherent because, okay, if she leaves and goes off, why is Ryu looking for the Sandflyer parts? You know? So let's see if we can find some Sandflyer, sandflyer parts. Anyway, welcome to the first town in the game. Also, the town that is the literal worst, most cramped piece of garbage in the game. It, this this place is literally showcases the absolute worst aspects of the camera system in this game. I mean, it's... Yeah. Luckily, most of the areas are not this cramped. There's a few that are cramped, but uh, not many. This is probably the worst. This lady uh, right here is the tutorial person. Uh, she teaches you how to uh, learn skills. You do that by guarding. I've already went over that. Uh, exploring. She talks about the, uh, the marks when you're walking from point A to point B where you stop. Uh, she teaches you a little bit about combo attacks. In fact, she actually teaches you the first combo attack you can do uh, at this point in the game, Firewind, which I will get into later. Now, let's see. This guy is an item merchant. Oh, no, this is the weapon merchant. I really don't recommend you buy anything here. Uh, there's really no need. If you're going to buy something, the Sage's Staff would probably be the best thing to buy, but other than that, no. I do recommend that you buy a couple of straights and a couple of baby frogs, just so you have some bait. Uh, you could buy the wooden rod if you want, but I really, it's not necessary. You get a better rod for free later in the game and and literally 
there's really no point to go fishing right now. Uh, you actually, I don't think you can actually buy anything at the Manilo here. To, uh, with the fish you can actually catch at that, uh, that fishing spot in that screen. Yeah. I think this actually, this guy right here, I do believe that blue Manila right there is actually, I think, the Manila merchant. And you can't do anything with him right now. But anyway, let's go on with the story. We'll talk with some NPCs. I'm probably going to miss some just due to the fact that this place is so freaking cramped. Oh, tavern. First rule of RPGs. Okay, you need to stop doing that. random skipping thing. I I fiddled around with the settings to hopefully stop the uh, the frame rate dropping I was getting last time and it seems to have caused a different problem. Anyway, we'll see how that goes on. Anyway, let's go in this house here. Hmm. And there's absolutely not a thing in that house. Okay, Game developers, I I'm going to do one of my major pet peeves. It's okay to have big, expansive environments, but have there be a point to those big, expansive environments. Let there be something there to reward you for exploring. Do not waste my time. You know, maybe if I drop the frame rate, uh, the, the recording rate down a little bit to maybe something like 50 frames a second, maybe that would fix it. I don't know. Right now I got it set to record at 60 frames a second. It worked fine for all of Wild Arms 2 the, that I recorded on my new computer. But, uh, I seem to be having a bit of trouble with this game. Anyway, the first thing you want to do is you want to talk to this frogman here and you want to buy his treasure. For 158 gold. And of course, we get a lead ball, which is actually a little more useful than you would think it would be. We'll get more into that later. Yeah. Okay, you can't get that way. There is a table in the way. Now carefully walk. I'm using a brand new PS3 controller for this, and it's a little stiff. I, uh, I miss my old controller. Also, the D-pad is rough. It's a different D-pad. Anyway, uh, my other controllers are all dead. This is the one I had on the charger, so this is the one I'm using. Okay. And welcome to one of Breath of Fire 4's many, 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 many games. Uh, Breath of Fire 3 had some mini games near the 75% uh, mark of the game. Uh, you know, mostly situated around the Shishu and things like that. In addition, you also had one or two. Uh, such as the the uh, wood chopping in the beginning and then when you put the chrism ore into the lighthouse and things like that. But this game completely blows Breath of Fire 3 out of the water in terms of uh, minigames. There is a bunch of minigames in this. So anyway, what you want to do is you want to feed this guy and uh, you want to get his happy bar up and basically the way I do this is I alternate food and water okay, I did wine so I want to do sausage
I'm gonna do some beer. Steak. Alright, and I'll do a wine. Uh, basically, the point of this game is you want to get the red bar to fill up. You want to fill up the red bar without filling up either one of the blue bars. And depending on how much expensive food he gives you, he gives you a different prize. I do believe the best thing you can get is a pancia. And I didn't get the pancia because I was skipping a little bit. Not that it really matters. Uh, you could pretty much just easily breeze through that little mini game by giving him uh, alternating uh, steak and wine. And you will for sure get the pancia if you do that. I'm not particularly worried about getting the pancia, so I'm not going to like redo that. Anyway, this gentleman is the information broker he was talking about. So, who is Ryu? All right, now, in what is probably the most baffling business decision ever, this guy does not tell you how much he wants to charge. Well, maybe it's not so baffling. You know, basically he says, make me an offer on the information. And if you don't give him enough, he says that's too low. If you give him too much, he takes your money. So you want to get as close to however much it is without going over. It's basically uh, the number guessing game from Breath of Fire 3 with a, a little toned down. Uh, basically, what you want to do is offer him 123 zenny. That is the exact amount he wants. Okay. And if you get, uh, I think, I don't know if he necessarily gives you it unless you, if you don't get it on the spot. But if you get it on the spot, you get a Ginseng, which is very handy because that raises your attack power. Okay, no, I want to go out. Go, go out. Thank you. Thank you very much. Alright, so. One, two, that, right there. Alright, talk to this merchant right here. Yes, please. What? I just spent all that money on a treasure, then I bought that old man all that food, and then I paid that other guy 123 information to tell me to come out here in the middle of the freaking desert to look for you. You're just intent on bleeding me dry. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Yay, we got the password. And you may notice that the uh, the git noise there is the same from Breath of Fire 3. The little git ditty. Alright, so now we gotta go back to Sarai. Get used to this. There is a lot of, uh... Fetch quest in this game, I guess, is to say it without being... sugar-coated at all. <clears throat> the main characters in this game put forth a lot of effort... A lot of effort. But, uh, don't get... 
very much in return. And this game for sure takes that old that old RPG trope where you gotta always have to take the long way around. This game takes this up to 11. 